The agreement in principle to raise the country's borrowing limit, reached late Saturday by House Republicans and the White House, was the result of hasty negotiations over the course of the previous week that frequently went late into the night. Even though both parties are now trying to rally support for the developing package, the marathon is far from over, and there is still little assurance that the country will avoid going into default. The agreement was designed to include provisions that could persuade members of both parties to vote in favor of it. It would raise the debt ceiling for two years, free spending on domestic programs, increase spending on defense and veterans issues, impose some new work requirements on federal food assistance programs, and alter some rules regarding energy permitting. However, even before the deal was officially announced, members of the House on the left and the right were already objecting to some of the purportedly included details. Democrats expressed concern that new rules on social safety net programs would push more Americans into poverty, while Republicans who had demanded deeper spending cuts threatened to withdraw their support. Rep. Bob Good, a Republican from Virginia, stated on Twitter that no one claiming to be a conservative could justify a yes vote. The upcoming fight to win the support of at least half of his party's members, as he promised, will be a turning point for House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's recently attained speakership. President Joe Biden will face pressure from Democrats to deliver the dozens of votes that will likely be required for the bill to pass. Rep. Hakeem Jeffries, the top Democrat in the House who will be in charge of organizing his members, and Biden spoke on Saturday. Since the deal is a compromise, not everyone will get what they want. That's the duty of leadership, Biden said in a statement late on Saturday, adding that the deal protects the important legislative achievements and priorities of myself and congressional Democrats. He claimed to have strongly urged both the House and the Senate to approve it. McCarthy announced the text of the package would be finalized by Sunday in a late Saturday speech, establishing the necessary 72-hour review period for members of Congress. He expressed the hope that the House would vote as soon as Wednesday, giving the leaders of each party very little time to garner enough support. As Washington rushes to avoid default, any one senator in the Senate has the power to stall the process by as much as a week. The government will run out of money on June 5 at the latest, according to a deadline set by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen last week. Since the U.S. has never defaulted before, economists believe the results would be disastrous. Conservative House Freedom Caucus Republicans have already threatened a fierce fight if they believe the compromise represents a significant retreat from the Republican line. They raise concerns about the length of the proposed debt ceiling increase and the push to limit spending to 2023 levels when many wanted to cap spending at 2022 levels prior to the deal's announcement. The meaningful, substantial, transformative fiscal reform that is required will be a significant price to earn my vote, said Texas Republican Rep. Chip Roy, a conservative and member of the House Rules Committee, on Thursday. Rep. Dan Bishop, a conservative House Republican, asserted that smaller spending cuts would amount to war. According to a source familiar with the negotiations, the White House and House Republicans have reached an agreement in principle that will raise the debt ceiling for two years and roughly cap non-defense spending for 2024 and 2025 at current fiscal year levels. The White House also appears to have given in to House Republican demands for work requirements for recipients of food stamps as part of the agreement. The agreement reached on Saturday exempts veterans and homeless people from the food stamp time limits and gradually imposes them on people up to the age of 54. These time limits will expire in 2030. The Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, currently only applies the work requirement to certain adults between the ages of 18 and 49. The agreement stops some Republican requested changes to the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families TANF, program and left Medicaid unchanged. The White House blasted the GOP position on the idea as cruel and senseless last week, but many Democrats have warned that adding more work requirements to social safety net programs is unworkable.